the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter, Father Dave. Once upon a time, I had a Catholic school when I was my first assigned, and you'd go into the classroom and be like, good morning, boys and girls. And then there's just like a way to say it. Good morning, Father Dave. But happy Easter. Jesus is risen. My grandfather, he would love to say um, that there are three ways to spread the good news. Television, telephone, tell a woman. <laughs> and that's what God did in the gospel you were here today. You're going to hear the gospel from the Easter Vigil. And what does God do? He tells Mary Magdalene that Christ is risen. And this is partly how you know that he actually rose from the dead. Because in the ancient world, the word of a woman didn't have authoritative weight. I mean, unless it was your mom, you best believe her. But if we were making this up, if we were making up the resurrection, we would have Jesus rise from the dead and appear to Caesar and Pontius Pilate and Caiaphas and like the, the Roman legions, which we would never have said that he rose and he appeared to Mary Magdalene. But he did. And she carries the good news to the apostles. And that's carried to your home today. Jesus comes and rises from the dead to forgive us from our sins and to show that that is complete. Let's participate in that and let, like Mary Magdalene, let's run to him by coming to him now at this Mass and calling to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we praise God for his mercy. And at this Mass and throughout all of Easter, we're going to be saying the glory or singing the glory in your parishes. So we praise God for his mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness, and everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christians The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early, when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, Who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. There was a comedian named Chris Farley, and he was a big guy, and he passed away, God rest his soul. Right? Hopefully he's in heaven right now. I think maybe he's in heaven and he's living in a van down by the river. 
Those of you who know Chris Farley know he was quite animated and had words to say to young people living in bands down by the river. Right? But he was a really big guy. And he used his size and his energy to make people laugh for other people's benefit. And he passed away. And he had this skit that he, he loved to do, and his comedic partner, David Spade, I think is his name, he would always be asking his friend, hey, come on, let's do that skit, let's do that skit, let's do that skit. And his friend would say, no, 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 no. But they eventually did it in a movie, and I think he would do it a bunch of times, and it was called Fat Guy, Little Coat. Fat Guy, Little Coat. And what did he do? Or he's this big guy, and he put his hands through the, the sleeves of this black suit jacket, right? And he put it on, and he's like, fat guy, little coat, fat guy, little coat, fat guy, little, wah! And he would like flex his arms, and when he did that, it like rips the back open. Of course it does, right? And he, he would do that to make people laugh. What does that have to do with Easter, Father Dave? What does that have to do with Easter at all? Well, of course, Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, right? God puts on human nature, becomes human. And what does he do? He also puts his arms into death. And on the cross, he dies, and he rips a hole in the other side of death so that you and I could rise. Death could not contain Almighty God. He experienced it, and he rips a hole so that you and I can come to heaven and join him if you choose to. And if you think about it, how did he open up the gates of heaven? Well, he did it by himself being ripped apart. And he was ripped apart for you and for me. You know, St. Padre Pio had, St. Padre Pio could see the spiritual world that you and I can't see, right? And of course, we're surrounded by things we can't see. We talk about this this past year. You can't see radio waves are passing through your living room right now. You can't see the angels and saints that are all around us. There's parts of the world we can't see. But Padre Pio, he was blessed with a special grace where he could, in fact, see the spiritual world. And some of you think, I would love to do that. Well, Padre Pio also saw the, the darkness, too. And Jesus will tell Thomas in the resurrection, blessed are those who believe but don't see. So there's a blessing not being able to see all of it right now. Padre Pio could see a lot. And he saw Jesus, and he said one time Jesus appeared to him, and Jesus was watching people get ready for church. Priests put on their vestments and people get ready. And he looked back at Padre Pio and he saw two tears running down our Lord's cheeks. Padre Pio asked him what that was about. Why was he so sad? You know, on Christmas, 100 days ago, we heard a story of Sarah. Sarah, who got that present from the man upstairs, ding, ding, right, the little car keys and the GPS unit, and it, she actually got to go to heaven, right? She followed the directions, and it went from small gift to bigger gift to bigger gift, brought her to all these places, and would eventually let her see and come into heaven. And there, she got to meet Mr. Thomas and hug her daughter again, meet Lazarus, right? And she would come back between 100 days ago, Christmas and today, Sarah would return to heaven many times. One time, in fact, she actually was there with her husband, he got to go there too and they saw their daughter and they saw their cat and they got to see Chris Farley living in a van down by the river and they got to see the angels and the saints. And when they saw Jesus for the first time, both Sarah and her husband said the same thing. The two souls we heard about in purgatory, those who were listening, remember the homily we had a couple weeks ago about introducing your loved ones to Christ? Right? Those two people would eventually, the brother and sister-in-law, they would eventually get out of purgatory. They did get out. You were wondering about that. And when they saw Jesus for the first time in all his glory, they said the same thing. When you see Jesus for the first time in heaven, what are you going to say to him? Many people say, well, I'm going to tell him I love him. And, and that's great. Other people are going to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you had to be ripped apart for me and my sins. And those are good things. But they both start with the word I. Padre Pio says that Jesus told him the reason why he was so sad was the ingratitude of his people. The ungratefulness of his people. I think, you know, everyone wants to say Happy Easter, and that's a great thing to say Happy Easter, but we can't say Happy Easter without 
saying to God, thank you. Because you've been redeemed, you've been saved. Yes, you have, and I have. And it costs God everything. At great cost, you have been saved. Literally, he let himself be ripped apart for you. You know, the shortest homily I ever gave, uh, maybe the second shortest they ever gave, was that one that says, you know, imagine you wake up in heaven, right? And all you have around, all you have in heaven are only the things or the people you thank God for. And you can't be, and specifically, like, you can't be like, thank you, God, for everyone and everything. No, no, the specific things. Like, I, I gave that homily years ago, and I still think about it. Like, you know, I'll be washing my hair, but like, God, thank you for shampoo. I don't know if I thank you for shampoo and conditioner, and thank you for a spatula to give eggs to my dog. I've already thanked you for my dog, but thank you for the spatula. Thank you, God, you know, for car rides and coffee and, you know, Starbucks. And thank you for my family and friends. Thank you for some of our good people here. And it's great. You can start. You, the list is never ending. If that was like the actual, like that was the surprise in heaven, is you only you get the things you thank God for and the people you thank God for. But specifically on Easter, imagine Mary Magdalene's joy when she beholds Jesus and the apostles. They know all that He did for them. Yes, they're going to tell Him they're sorry. Yes, they're going to tell Him they love Him. And he knows that. He says, Peter, right, Peter, do you love me? And he knows the answer already. But Jesus was so sad that only one of those ten lepers came back and thanked him. I think if you wish people happy Easter, that's a great thing. Tell everybody on your phone, happy Easter. But make sure for every happy Easter you say, thank you, Lord. Let us profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's raise our prayers and petition to Almighty God on this Easter Sunday. That our Holy Mother Church may be filled with Easter joy in her remembrance and celebration of Christ's Paschal Mystery, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the light of the risen Christ, shining for all the world to see, may guide people to repentance and belief in the Gospel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who struggle in faith and are burdened by doubt, may be strengthened by God's grace this day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer from addictions, especially those addicted to opiates, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this Easter season may be a time of growing in the gifts God has given us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our beloved dead may share in the life of the risen one, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the petitions we hold in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. 
We pray that our culture may move from a, may rise from a culture of death to a culture of life. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the men and women serving in the military, especially those overseas. May they be kept safe and may Easter joy come to them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have prayed or journeyed with us throughout this past year. May God bless them with the news of the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. For the holy souls of purgatory. May purgatory be emptied this day and all those souls come to heaven. May they pray for us. We pray to the Lord. Almighty Father, turn toward us and hear the prayers you inspire us to ask. For we ask them on the day of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exalted with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land and every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We're going to use Eucharistic prayer one because it's Easter Sunday. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service. 
that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as you were once pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that the, these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us in the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. And here you're going to mention silently uh, people who have passed away that you would like to pray for. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, Martha, and all your saints. Amid us we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Maybe at this Easter Mass you can wish peace to someone you would like to be at peace with, maybe that you've had a tough time being at peace with. And you can mention them you know, to our Lord, whether that's your mother-in-law or your parish priest, whoever that is. Wish them the peace of Christ today in your prayers. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel or be seated. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mystery, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. So what did they have for breakfast in heaven today? Easter eggs. 
So some of you may know uh, this answer already also, uh, not a joke, but for Easter, at least over here, we have, um, you eat those chocolate bunnies, right? And why are the bunnies hollow? Why do you have a hollow chocolate bunny? Because you break your teeth, if it was a solid chocolate, some people like the, the solid ones, but it's supposed to be hollow because the grave is empty. There's no body in the grave. Jesus rose from the dead, and the Easter bunny, the hollow chocolate bunny shows us that. So enjoy your your hollow chocolate bunnies wherever you are, and hollowed be thy name you can think of, maybe. I don't know. Thank you, everybody, who joined us for Easter, who joined us at Christmas, who joined us all year long. Thanks, everybody, for your different ways of encouraging us, the thumbs up and all that. That really does help. Let's other people know about this. Let everybody know whether it's this. You don't have to let them know about this match, but let them know about Jesus, who rose from the dead, who loves you. Thank you guys for following him and, and giving your life to him, especially during this time of uh, pandemic. That Christ is risen. Thanks be to God. And, and one day, we'll all be with him together in paradise. If you keep the faith, so keep the faith. And we'll see you next week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus Christ is risen today. Uh -huh. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel. Eventually my staff will stand for that. Oh. <laughs> We're so busy with the video. <laughs> from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Now I can't say that. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord. <laughs> you what realize you? your mistake. You, you were keeping your hand like this. So oh, the first yeah. part of it, and then your hand is going like this, like, I really should keep it down. You really... <laughs> Let's try that again. Lord Help has me. Let us rejoice. Pathetic. <laughs> no, we'll get there. We'll get there. What is above, not of what is on earth. I lost the rhythm. I lost that rhythm. <laughs>